Do you find you struggle when you try to blend acrylic paint? Here's some tips to help you with your technique coming up. Hi again there guys, Emma here from Paint and Pino, giving you some top tips for all things art and design. And today we're gonna to look how to blend effectively. It's probably one of the things that puts most people off using acrylic paints because they can be quite tricky to use if you don't understand the main concepts. I know when I was younger, I used to use a lot of water. Now, working professionally, and just obviously practicing and developing these skills over years, I try to avoid water as much as possible because I find it goes too translucent there are lots of mediums you can use as an alternative, but water and acrylic for me just don't go, particularly when it goes to blending. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks today on how we can blend without having to water it down. So the first trick I wanna show you is the one that I, is my go-to form of blending. So it's basically keeping the paint wet just through pure speed and volume. I'm gonna do a quick sunset blend to show you just how quickly and simply it can be. So I'm just going to start off with the lightest colour that I have. In this case, it's going to be the white acrylic. So I've gone with a very large brush. I've got quite a lot of acrylic on here. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to do in sections here. I'm just going to go quite quickly. And I'm going to go down about halfway to the page. So if you imagine that's going to be the bottom of my small painting here. So I'm going to go down to about there with my white. All right, so I'm not going to use any water whilst it's still wet. I'm then going to go into the next lighter colour, which is going to be the cool yellow. So now I'm going to work just from the top and I'm going to start blending it down. One of the tricks here actually in terms of if you're doing a sky, you're doing something that you want to be a very subtle blend is how people actually use their wrist. So a lot of people paint rainbows as I call them, where you paint like you're waving. The trick is to try and get a really straight line. Okay, so it's something that you can just practice. Um, I for years had a slight wonky line to my way of working. I guess it's just to being wonky. Um, but this is all practice, so to try and get this blend going down, so again working now with the, the warm yellow and now going into the, we'll go with the warm red. Okay, now because I've got white on my paintbrush, it's going to have a pastel effect. So I'm just going to get rid of some of that excess white, so I'm just going to rub some of that paint off. And then I'm going to go back to the, I'll go back to the orange actually, go back to the yellow and then going on with the red. You'll notice as well, when I'm taking the paint, I actually go, I scoop it underneath. I don't go on top because you don't want to contaminate your paint. So you get a much truer way of working. Now you'll see here, I'm just going to finish off with my red down at the bottom. So just put a hint of cool red in there as well to get a lovely deep color. You see where it's dry, the difference, it's so much harder to blend when the, the whole background is dry. And then I'm just going to work the whole thing up again, getting those gorgeous straight lines. You can see the paint on the brush naturally drags the paint up with it. Okay, if you find that you've got too much red on there, you can always put more yellow, obviously. I'm quite happy with this at the moment. And then just finishing off right at the top. There you go. So the next trick I'm going to show you is um, what we call cross hatching. So cross hatching is very similar to when you're shading, where you're simply just crossing over with your brush or your pencil. So again, I'm going to do the similar color scheme. This time, we're actually going to start with the darkest color first, just because it's on my brush already. It's a dirty brush, but that's not a problem. You can work either way. It's just preference. I just like to go lighter to start with, especially if I'm practicing my paint stroke, because obviously the white on the canvas, you're basically just priming the canvas. So it's like a good practice run. So this time we're going to start with the cooler red, almost like a dry brush technique. I don't want to get too much paint onto my brush. Then I'm just going to do a little bit more than that actually. I'm just going to do some simple cross hatches, which basically crosses like so. And then I'm just going to work it with my warm red. So again, you don't want to go above half the page you want to go from that red to that yellow. All right, just making sure I get rid of any excess paint. And then I'm going to go straight on, I think, with my cool yellow this time. So again, working over it, coming halfway down. So at first you won't even notice the yellow being on there. It's quite subtle. So just crossing it over. Going again, one more up. 
So again, the faster you can work with acrylic, the easier it is to blend. The, obviously the trick is to not wanting your paint to actually dry, just get rid of some of that excess paint. It's always handy to have a scrap piece of paper handy. And then I'm just going to finish it off with the white. The beauty with this technique as well is that you, you can just keep working in. Whilst the paint's still wet, it doesn't matter whether you're going with the straight technique or whether you're going with the cross hatching as I'm doing now, you're still going to get those gorgeous different paints blending into each other. Now I know the next question is going to be, yeah, but what happens if my painting dries? You can try and use water to loosen up the paint. I wouldn't recommend it though because you're never going to get the same level of opacity. Um, so what I tend to do is actually just redo the colour. So let's imagine this area here had dried. I would simply go back to my darker red and just redo the red colour. It might mean you have to do a large section again. But in the long run, it's actually worth it because you're going to get a much nicer quality painting. There you go. It's my preference, just because of the style of painting I like to use, but it depends on different techniques as well. Some people like to see the actual paint strokes of the brushes, so obviously you can choose which way you go. The other way to do this as well is, if you're looking at a more impressionist style painting, then you want to go really thick and chunky with your paint. So the next trick I'm going to show you is actually blending with a palette knife. So palette knives come in different forms, different shapes. I only actually use the one shape because I find this shape actually really quite versatile. You've got the fine detail edge, you've also got the long blade so you can do nice large areas. So I'm just going to work in this area here. So this time all we're going to do, I'll show you where my white is, just going to scoop. I'm going to get quite a lot of paint onto that palette knife. And if you've never used a palette knife before, I cannot recommend enough just getting out there and playing and experimenting. So what we're gonna do now is, because it's white, it doesn't matter, we get away with it. So we're just gonna spread it on, almost like it's we're buttering a piece of toast. What you want to try and avoid with a palette knife is just doing the same stroke over and over again. So I'm just gonna load up, I'm just gonna load up this whole area. Okay, so I've got quite a lot of paint on here now, so now I'm going to start blending in my colours. So if I start with, we'll go with the warmer, no, we'll go with the cool yellow to start with. So it goes on really beautifully now, it goes on like butter, because you've already got that white background. And again, if you can try and avoid doing it too regularly, you get much nicer qualities going on. Okay, I'm just going to add a bit more of my cool red this time. I'm actually struggling in this corner here. I need more space. I need more space. There we go. So you can start to see how those gorgeous colours blend in. And the great thing with a palette knife, if you make a mistake, you can literally scoop it off and you actually get some really gorgeous techniques there or gorgeous textures going on with that as well but I'm I'm quite happy with this just gonna go a bit more with my red and again working whilst your paint is still wet really is going to help so let's finish off with the yellow and again you can see the different strokes give a lovely quality that you're not necessarily going to get if you're blending with this style here. Hardest decision I find as an artist is knowing when to stop. I think if you're a perfectionist, it makes it hard. So sometimes you've just got to go, no, nah, happy with that. We're just going to leave it be. All right, guys, the last technique I'd like to show you today is blending with primer. Um, a lot of people use like a float medium to try and get paints to blend together beautifully. Floating mediums are fantastic, but they're quite expensive as well. So what I find is there's a, there is a video, just I'll put the link below, um, showing you some sort of cheats on how to use uh, homemade products to make your own version of a floating medium. The one that I like to go with is actually the top. So I'll show you here. I've got, I've got some cheap, cheap priming paint. 
and you can see the top that's just been sitting for a while and all that yellow stuff on the top is all the oil that kind of rises to the top so that's the oil that we're going to be using for this painting um, and I've had a little bit of white in there as well if you can avoid using too much white because again you're going to get those pastel colors and if you want to get a really rich blend of color you're not going to have quite as much success so I'm just going to grab quite a large brush I'm just going to scoop off some of that I'll just show you what I'm doing here I'm just going to scoop off some of that top there Okay, got a little bit of white, but that's okay. And then all we're going to do is just simply prime. You can go quite rough with this. The more oil you can get, the better. If you haven't got any um, primer paint, I mean, acrylic is expensive, but obviously just you're going to use a similar technique just using the white primer. Sorry, the, the white acrylic underneath. All right, so once you've got plenty of primer down, then we can start to blend really quickly. So again, I'm just going to start off with a tiny bit of white at the top. Show you how quick this works. Bit of the cool yellow. Bit of the warm yellow. Again, you can practice those lovely straight strokes. Wipe off some of that excess. I'm used to working in larger spaces in the little quarters. And I'm going to go with the, the warm red. Go down to the, the cool red. Okay. Obviously, if you want to really be a perfectionist, you can just work up very gently, just going up, just touching those paints in. You get that bit more of an orange blend going through, but that's absolutely fine. And there you have it. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I'm just showing you some little tricks and tips on how to blend effectively. Because again, it is one of the things that stops people from wanting to paint. So if it helps your confidence, then it's going to get you painting as well. If you have enjoyed today's video, guys, then please hit that like button below, as it really does help our channel. And if you're interested in getting more tips and tricks on art and design, then if you hit that subscribe and notification button, we do have regular videos. All right, that's it for now, guys. We'll see you next time. Happy painting.